you guys ever have one of those days where you just feel like <laughs> shit? I'm having one. But anyway. <laughs> so I think this topic applies to pretty much anyone who's going to be building or thinking about or dreaming about building their own tiny home, converting their own van, converting an RV, you know, making an addition really in the mindset of a tiny house. And so a lot of our community is either in the process of buying and building a van or maybe you guys are just thinking about van life and can you do it but a lot of questions come up of you know people saying I wonder if I could build my own van you know you see van tours like ours and you're like wow could I build that and so I wanted to go over the things that during my build that I learned are really kind of what it takes to do your own van build. So I'm gonna go through those things today. And so the first thing I always like to start with is safety. And uh, you know, in terms of safety, I think one thing to keep in mind is you need to probably have the ability to lift up to around 50 pounds comfortably without straining. Now anything over 50 pounds, I would always recommend getting somebody to help you lift anyway. But being able to lift that much weight I think is important. I think another important thing is flexibility and your joint movements. And so if you think about converting a van, there's a lot of overhead work that's gonna involve your shoulders as well as underneath the van. And so those are a couple things, your shoulders you wanna think about and then your knees. And so you're constantly stepping in and out of the van, so going up and down steps. You're working in a t t small space. A lot of times you actually have to get down on your knees or work down low to get in the corners and things like that. And so you really kind of work through the whole gamut of all your joints. And so you need to consider that. And also you're gonna be doing some ladder work if you have, uh, like max fans you're going to put in there or if you're going to put on solar panels or anything on the roof uh, an awning anything like that is going to require some ladder work and so that's something else to be mindful of kind of shifting out of the physical health let's talk about mental health right and so a van build can really put someone <laughs> mentally through the test I mean, this requires a lot of patience. Um, you know, I could just remember throughout the build of waiting for different distributors or vendors to get me the things that I needed or uh, just thinking I had something worked out and then figuring out that, that that solution wouldn't work. And so it just required a lot of patience and problem solving. And that's in the initial phase, but also as you go through the build and you kind of encounter different obstacles or odd shapes in the wall or whatever, and you have to figure out how to finish those out or work around. And so you need some problem solving. And then I would say also you need a bit of analytical ability, um, meaning you're gonna have to research and kind of figure some stuff out as probably many of you all already know, if you've already been thinking about, it, you've probably been watching a lot of videos and reading blogs and stuff like that to try to figure things out. But I would say that's a necessary thing that you would want to consider. And then I would quickly shift into the skills. What are your skill sets? And uh, I don't think you have to be a master at any of these. Um, I'm certainly not a master carpenter, and that's number one on the list. But there is a fair amount of woodwork in these, and uh, or whether you use wood or another similar material. So cutting, drilling, uh, you know, putting screws in, all those types of things that you would have with any carpentry or working with wood, you're going to be doing that in your van build. And I should say 
a lot of these and this is an example of that if you wanted you could have maybe somebody do that portion of it if it didn't lend to your skill set but plumbing would be the second thing on that list and for plumbing you know i think is probably one of the easier trades at least to me personally um you know you're working with plastic pipe you cut it you either put it in the fitting or you glue it or whatever and it's fairly easy to follow water flow and pressure and i think a bit easier than the next skill which is electrical and uh you know if snow hears me anytime i ever do any electrical projects i'm always you know cussing because i just <laughs> am not i it's not it's not something that i'm good at or whatever but twisting those little wires together and all that type of stuff but anyway my hands are too big i think but electrical is a skill that you're going to have to tap into i'm definitely not an expert at that so if i can do uh that build you probably can but that's something else you'd want to consider and then another sort of pain in the butt for me thing for me is the metal work you know when you're drilling through metal or you're cutting metal uh, you know, a lot of times uh, you're going to be using a grinder at the end. You have all those metal shavings. And again, they just enhance the risk associated with metal chips flying through the air. So you always want to be extra cautious when you're doing that. And so that adds a risk factor to me. And also it's just, it's just harder than cutting another surface like, you know, plastic or wood and stuff like that. But so metal work uh, is kind of, to me, the hardest work in the build. Um, and along the lines of all the skills, then you also have to think about the tools that go along with that. And so you may already have in your garage a couple saws and you'd be able to get a jigsaw and get some of the things you need for a simple build. But for a bigger build, there's going to be specific tools that you're going to need a lot of them again more general tools but then there are going to be some specific tools like maybe a rib nut tool or uh you know some maybe a grinder maybe you don't have a grinder you need a grinder to kind of sand your edges so you can prep them and anti-rust them so they don't rust and get water in them but anyway those are some some examples of tools I'll probably do another another video just that covers all the tools you need to uh, all the tools you need for for sort of the van build. And then another thing I think is important is a shopper garage. And for me, we had a garage, and so that was important that I could when we got in the big stuff like the solar panels or whatever that had a lot of packaging, you can unpackage those. You can take the rubbish out and dispose of that. You have a place to set those or store those while you wait for everything else to come in and so you can move on with the next phases of your build. And then also, like when I built things like the attic, it was nice to have a big flat workspace where I could spread things out and sort of assemble them inside of there, sort of, you know, a few hours here and a few hours there whatever fit my schedule and then a place to put the tools and just all the materials and so all that's a really nice I have worked with uh, friends who have converted vans while they lived in them and uh, my hats are off to them because uh, it's a tough thing so it certainly can be done but uh, not something I would encourage if you have the means otherwise but definitely something you need to consider and then the last thing I'm going to talk about is you need to have a plan and you know if you know a lot of people say what would i do if differently if you know knowing what i know now i would have gone in with a more specific plan and i had a, i had sort of a a rough drawing of what i wanted to do but i worked a lot of it out in the build and knowing what i know now just from a constructability standpoint i could have done a couple things a little differently and maybe th made things a little bit lighter. Um, just a few things that, uh, you know, would make me happier with the overall build. But I think that's one of the most important things that you can have is a good plan when you go into your build and so you can build what you want. And so 
I hope all this stuff was helpful. I know we covered a lot of stuff, but if you internalize that and just run those through the filter of you, not through me, but what your abilities are, if you can do those things, then you can do, you can build the van. Cheers guys. See you on the next one. If you liked this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. So you know, when we put out new videos. To see behind the scenes action and help support our journey, head over to our YouTube membership page. You can find the link in the video description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in a few days.